What's happening everybody? Thanks for tuning back into the channel today right here with the Rust Belt Mechanic. So you've cruised back in here for some more tools, have you? So we've got all kinds of them here for you. Four new ones for the channel. Gonna be showing you guys some new nifty tools of the week. Ones that have helped me get through my job and hopefully can help you out as well. First nifty tool that we're going to come to today is our newest item from Autel. Uh, this isn't brand new to the market, but it is new to me. Autel was cool enough to send me one to do some testing this week. This is the Autel TS408 TFPMS relearn tool. Also is able to do RF transmitter receiving, so you guys can test any of those key fobs out as well. So I got to looking at this one uh, this week, using it here and there, and is a great like midline TPMS tool. It's not gonna do absolutely everything you guys need in a shop, but it is gonna do quite a few different items. It's gonna be able to read just about any sensor on the market up through 2017. Uh, this also does come up with come with free updates and software online, updatable through the USB port. All you have to do is plug it into a computer. You're not going to have to pay for any kind of subscription or anything like that. Uh, very nice color screen to it. It does have a a really nice little um, amount of TPMS tools inside of it, able to bring up the latest tools and the latest kits that you were doing the testing on just to see which ones you were on prior to that test. Uh, the TPMS function itself, it is able to program certain empty TPMS monitors, but only the MX style monitors. I did try to use this one and tried to program a couple of the Easy Link, the Schrader sensors, uh, both in the 433 and the 315 megahertz lines. Uh, it will not work for that. It will only program blank MX sensors. So keep that in mind if you're looking to do that one. I don't have anything against those sensors. Those sensors are great. They're a uh, cheaper sensor for you and they, they still work fantastic. So if you're looking on using that style of sensor, it'll work fantastic for you. Now here in the kit, there is quite a few other small items in here uh, for some of the older vehicles that do require activation with the magnet tool. It does come with the magnet, comes with the instruction manual, and then comes with the charger cord for the unit, as well as the USB updating cord as well. Uh, one of the big fallbacks to this one is going to be the fact that it cannot plug into the OBD2 port of a vehicle. So if that specific vehicle line does require you to plug the service tool in to do a physical programming of new sensors, this is not going to be able to do that one. This one is gonna be only for the ones that are able to program the sensors right there to themselves. And then it will tell you whether it has its own relearn process or if you're gonna to have to get another tool to plug in to relearn those sensors. Now it is does have a very nice database of all the different makes and models of vehicles. So if you have the new TPMS sensor that you're looking to program and it has a manual relearn procedure, all you have to do is click onto that section and it will go into and show you exactly how to manually relearn those tire pressure monitors. Pretty nifty tool. Now this also has a pretty decent price. At $179 over on Amazon, it's a great middle of the market for a TPMS tool. Most of the TPMS tools that I've tested have been in like the $250, $300, $350 range. So this one's a cheaper option to be able to do a lot of the sensors for a lot of the backyard mechanic style guys. It would be great for you guys to get this style of TPMS tool into your box. Second nifty tool that we've got for you today is the Motivex Tools MX2342, and this is the Cummins oil filter adapter plug. Now, if you guys are doing oil changes on Cummins engines, anything 2014 and newer, you definitely are knowing about these tools. Now, if you've looked back on this prior nifty tools, I have done a review on one before, and that was on this specific Lyle tool. Uh, it does the same thing. It is a plug for that oil filter, and it goes on, and it is supposed to do just about the same thing. Only thing that this one takes care of 
that where this one fails is going to be the fact that this one is a one piece design and the Lyle one is a two piece design where once you get this thing going on to the oil filter it is actually going to be able to spin the handle so if you accidentally don't get it in there right the handle will spin and that will not seal correctly. One of the biggest pet peeves that I don't like. So like I said, got a Cummins oil filter here. Uh, for you guys who do not know what I'm talking about, the oil filter has to come out through the fender liner area. They do not allow the oil filter to drop straight down out anymore on the passenger side. You actually have to get into the passenger side fender liner. So you unscrew this one by hand, and then all of a sudden you realize it doesn't come out vertically. It won't come out at all. To be able to get it out, you have to tip it over and pull it out on its side. And of course, in awesome mechanical engineering, it actually just dumps oil absolutely everywhere. And these guys thought about this thing really great, obviously. So Motivex and a couple of other companies, they've got the plug tool to where you can unscrew it and you can set it down into the little catch basin. This tool will then screw right onto that little area right onto that and it will seal against the top of it allowing you to grab onto this nice little nifty handle right here on top pull it out horizontally without spilling a drop of oil now if you guys know what i'm talking about these things spill oil everywhere and it's diesel oil and it goes all over the place gets everything terribly messy customers don't like it or you have to spend you know an extra 15 minutes cleaning it up with two cans of brake clean not any fun so Motivex has done a pretty good job on this one. I've used it for a couple of weeks now and it does a great job. One piece design, which I also, you know, just absolutely like the fact that it does not spin. Uh, plastic, really easy, nothing to break on it. Good tool to have. Now to find this one, you're gonna go over either to Motivex website, which I will put down in the description below, or you can go on over to Amazon. They're $19.95 easy nifty tool for you guys who are doing oil changes on Cummins engines. Third nifty tool of the day is going to be the Genius Boost by NOCO. This is going to be their GB150 model and this is actually what we use here in our shop to jumpstart vehicles out on the lot. If you guys have seen before, you know I've done a review on the GB40, the GB70, as well as a couple of other jump packs here on the channel. Uh, SP Tools did a really awesome one that had a capacitor jump pack, and this is the larger version, but not a capacitor. It is still lithium ion batteries inside of here. Now, the GB150 is rated at what they say is 4,000 peak amps of output. Now, Whatever people intend to see with 4,000 peak amps is, I, I don't know how great that one is. There's a whole lot of other people on YouTube who have done tests on these to tell you how much peak amps really are. So 4,000 peak amps, that's bam right away. That's what you get on the first second. But after that one, I think we're working at right around 1,200 to maybe 15, 1,800 constant amps from this. Uh, they say it's able to jumpstart up to a 10 liter diesel, which I have not personally tried one that large. We have jumpstarted plenty of six sevens that are absolutely dead on our lot and works great for that. Has plenty in the tank, 22,500 joules of stored energy inside of it, weighs approximately, we're going to say about five pounds. Uh, you know, it's not the smallest thing, and as you guys can see, it's not the ones that can you can fit into your back pocket. But for what this thing jumps, it is a great size for that one. It's not like the big old jump carry cases that are bigger than this Altel case. Uh, it's actually a pretty good size, you know, pretty manageable to be able to take around. I like the fact that it does have these little nubs here on the side to be able to clamp the cables on when you're not using them. On the very end of it, it does have a 500 lumen lamp, but again, how many of you guys are actually going to be using that one? You're going to be using this one out on the side of the road, not usually to where you'll have to use that lamp. But some people might. Uh, the cool thing that the GB150 offers that the GB40 and 70 series do not is the fact that it has a small LED indicator here on this side. So when you hook this thing up to a vehicle, it's going to have that LED indication of exactly what the voltage is on the vehicle that you are going to be jump starting. Works great, has all of the exact same features safety-wise as any of the other jump packs have had. It will not allow you to hook this thing up backwards 
backwards. It won't allow you to spark them together. It has all the safety precautions. So uh, your child or you know whoever you might have entrusted to this one, your wife put it in the cart, they're not gonna be able to mess up either the jump pack or the vehicle they're trying to jump start. All you're gonna have to do is turn on the, the button here. It shows you how much indication of battery level is inside of it. If there is above four volts, it will automatically start to jump. Now, if it's under four volts, it has a hard time reading the, uh, the actual positive and negative side of the battery. So it can't arguably say, okay, I know what it's hooked up to because the voltage is just too low. Now, because of that happening, there is an override button. A little exclamation point right here in the lower side. You hold that one for five seconds and it will automatically boost forward into whatever you need. Now, you might want to not want to show that one to your teenage drivers because they'll then be able to mess something up, pushing that override button and running it along that line. So just keep that one in mind. Here on the end, it does have quite a few extra little features. Uh, you're able to charge it via a 110 volt a wall outlet plugged into a small USB port or a 10 volt DC current where you can plug it in into a cigarette lighter. It will charge this much faster off of a DC power surge. Uh, also a DC power outlet for a cigarette lighter here on the end that the kit also comes with and a two and a half amp output USB. So you can charge any amount of phones or whatever you want to run on your USB. Just turn it on and it's gonna charge quite a few things with a battery this size. Now, where can you get this one? Just about anywhere. NOCO has it over on their website, obviously gonna be a little bit more expensive, or you can go over and get it on the Amazons. 275 bones you can pick this one up for. Works really well. I definitely recommend it for shop owners, people who are using it to jumpstart larger engine vehicles. Uh, it works great. I definitely recommend for you guys to pick one of these up. Last but not least on our nifty tools of the week, we have the Snap-on 305 ASXW. It's a five piece wobble extension set in half inch. Now I picked this one up off the Snap-on truck this last week because Snap-on is running some really killer deals. Now I know this one isn't the wobble pluses where it has the extension with the wobble end or you can push it on farther to lock it into a straight use. Uh, I actually just wanted a wobble set for working on a lot of the other Cummins vehicles taking the fuel filters off which are in just that pain in the butt area where I need something to wobble just enough in there. Uh, I don't like to use a big half inch you know impact universal socket all the time they're extra bulky and I just pain in the butt when I just need that little bit of extra wobble that's what I ended up getting these for. The five piece extension set uh, is really nice it comes in all the sizes that I have come into needing over the last couple of weeks works out really well. Like I said, it comes in this really nice blow molded case that snap on stuff usually comes in. Uh, works out all right. It works in my box for what I'm using it for for now. I'm going to be doing some more organization in the toolbox for my top drawer with sockets and extensions at a later time. Just kind of waiting for a couple of different things to come out that I'm keeping my eye out on. Now, why I picked these ones up for sure, uh, this last week, normally on Snap-on site, they run $205, but there's a lot of Snap-on reps this week running promos on these at $149.95. So I thought that was a great deal. I didn't have a good set of wobble extensions for my half inch set. Great little set to add to my collection. I definitely recommend those as well. So in good fashion of Nifty Tools of the Week, I'd like to do a shout out to another great content creator in the automotive or tool region of YouTube. Now, I know I've shouted him out before, but he is my kind of right-hand man and we need to push him over the top. Mr. Captain Ron, or who he's changed his channel to now, The Master Apprentice, uh, he has got an amazing YouTube channel. He does all kinds of reviews for tools, toolboxes. He went to Harbor Freight and did a whole review on some neat tools that for beginner mechanics on what they need to be thinking about getting. He does a great job at that one. He's at like 950 subs and we really need to push him over that thousand sub mark. So make sure you go over to Master Apprentice's channel. I'll put the link right down in the description below. Make sure you go over to his channel, hit the subscribe button, see what you like with his channel. Maybe you guys will be interested in what he's got to put out.
Well guys, hopefully you've enjoyed what I brought to the table today for Nifty Tools of the Week. I know these things have helped me out tremendously over the last week or so, and hopefully they'll be able to help you guys out as well, get you some good deals on them, maybe give them a try. Also, I wanted to remind everybody that coming up, we are going to have a live auction. If you haven't been paying attention to the channel, I did a 20,000 subscriber giveaway, and I gave away this Snap-on Ethos Edge Scan Tool. Uh, it is used, but very lightly. I've only used it for testing purposes over the last eight to 10 months, so it is a pretty nice scan tool. Um, I was giving that one away, and I gave it away to somebody, and he ended up saying, hey, I really don't need this one, but I want to give back to the Rust Belt Mechanics Scholarship Fund, so let's auction it off and put all the proceeds to that. So thank you to Jason who so kindly donated that one back. So this Sunday on September the 8th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on the YouTube channel, we're going to do a live auction. Everybody's going to be able to bid on the Ethos Edge Scan Tool. Maybe you guys get an awesome deal, but Every single penny that is donated by the winning bid is going to go directly into the Rust Belt Mechanics Scholarship Fund. What is that one, you might ask? I've started a GoFundMe page over on this site here, and that one is for new technicians who are going to school over at Sinclair Community College. We're raising money for new techs there to be able to get tuition, books, tools, all kinds of great things for a couple of the better students that they have working on over the, the program. That one is gonna be given to the top, top few students over at Sinclair at the end of their first semester of this school year. So big thank you again to Jason for donating back to that channel. Make sure you guys set that in your calendar to be back here on the channel on the 8th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. I appreciate everything you guys have done for the channel. We're on our way, rocking up to almost 25,000 now. Thanks, and as always, you guys stay awesome.